What's up, metal and heavy music fans? Today we are ranking the albums of Mashuga. All right, let's kick things off at the beginning with Contradictions Collapse in 1991. I actually got my start with Meshuggah on Destroy, Erase, Improve and had to circle back to this one later. Kind of avoided it for a while because, I don't know, just something about it didn't necessarily appeal to me. But ultimately, it's a pretty solid album. I think the best way I've heard it described is as kind of like an extension of Metallica's And Justice For All and Master of Puppets. I can definitely hear that in Jens' vocals on this particular album. He's kind of putting more of that Hetfield Jarl into it, and the riffs are definitely kind of prog-era Metallica. Taken just on its own, I would probably give this album like a B-, minus. but within the larger context of the band, discography, I feel like a D feels more appropriate. So then we have Destroy, Erase, Improve in 1995, and like I said, this was my initial exposure to the band. My friends and I had been downloading songs from bands we'd come across in metal magazines, and I stumbled onto the track Future Breed Machine, and it just blew my mind, and I've been a fan ever since I heard it. This is where the band actually started to kind of develop their own sound with that trademark gent guitar tone and style, and then mixing that with those kind of jazzy interludes. Also, a couple of little factoids here. This album is number 42 on Rolling Stone's 50 Greatest Prog Rock Albums of All Time, and 77th on their list of 100 Greatest Metal Albums of All Time. So needless to say, it's popular and for a good reason. The first three tracks to me are excellent, maybe even perfection, but it does kind of start to lose some steam after Transfixion. There are also longer jazz parts like Acrid Plasticity that make for a more dynamic listen, but ultimately the pacing's a little bit clunky and it does drag in certain areas, so you know, even though I kind of want to rank it higher for Legacy, I'd say when weighted against everything else, I'm leaning towards kind of a B on this one. Which brings us to Chaos Sphere in 1998. So this seems to be like the favorite album of the old school Mashuga fan base, and for a pretty good reason. It's got a lot of great stuff on it, especially mainstay track New Millennium Cyanide Christ. What a fantastic name for a track, by the way. It's definitely a much faster, heavier album than Destroy Your Race Improve, and I'd say more to the point with fewer interludes, just getting in your face with the likes of Concatenation, which is one of my personal favorites. At this point, they're fully embracing the polyrhythmic gent style as the core element of their sound, and it feels like the blueprint for the rest of their albums moving forwards, even if it still has just a touch of that remaining kind of thrash energy another album I had to cycle back to as well because even though I was initially exposed to Meshuggah with Destroy, Race, Improve, I heard that album when nothing was coming out, so I basically skipped over this one. But I really kicked myself when I did finally come back to it because, damn, this is a really good album. I just happened across the CD in a discount bin for like a dollar, and I was like, well, hell, I can't say no to that, and I never looked back once I pressed play on it. I think the first half in particular is pretty much perfection, with pummeling ragers like Corridor of Chameleons, and then the groovier Neurotica, and then the second half's really solid too, with tracks like Sane, but that first half especially just kicks your fucking ass. I also like the weird vocals on the exquisite machinery of torture, which will come full circle in a way. I will say that this one feels a little bit overly uniform when compared to some of my personal favorites. Like, there's just a lot of sameness between the tracks. So for that, it's not quite an S for me, but definitely I'd say an A at minimum. Fantastic album and a must listen for the band. Then we have Nothing in 2002. So this has been my mainstay Meshuggah album basically since the day that it came out. I remember there were ads everywhere in the magazines I was reading, hyping it up, and they had the tagline, you'll get nothing and like it, which I always found clever, so it kind of stuck with me. So yeah, unsurprisingly, this is an S-tier Meshuggah album for me personally, and for my money, it's also one of their most dynamic and varied albums with a lot of different textures and layers to to it while never straying too far from their core sound. I definitely hear some interesting influence from the new metal movement on the atmosphere and the production as well, which has also it was pretty typical to other bands like Fear Factory around this time as well. Everybody was kind of figuring out, like, how do we capitalize on this new popular thing? But they did so in a way where it doesn't fall into, like, the worst tropes of that. And anyways, this also ditches basically 
any remaining thrash influences and really leans into the slower, groovier elements. Full-on hypnotic head-bobbing music at this point. It was also remastered in 2006 with 8-string guitars, and I like both versions. Obviously, the 8-string version has a lot more low-end, but you know, either version is perfectly enjoyable. I probably spent about equal time with both of them. So many incredible songs on here. Rational Gaze, Spasm, Closed Eye Visuals, and I actually used Stenga in my college music course during the unit on Time Signature. We were supposed to bring in tracks that were not in 4-4, and I actually had the teacher a little bit stumped because the drums here are in 4-4, but the guitar kind of rolls past it each time, and I've never been great at describing that. Somebody more into that stuff could explain it better, but it was just kind of fun to have the teacher sit there for a good five minutes kind of listening to the beginning and trying to figure out what was going on. If I do have one nitpicky criticism of the album, it's that it is a bit overlong, and you could probably honestly snip off the last two two tracks. They're not bad, it's just that it might be a little bit more concise that way. Either way, I could listen to this album over and over again, and I do, <laughs> and I think for all of those reasons, it is worthy of that S-tier level. Next up, we have the infamous Catch 33 in 2005. So I was pretty hyped for this to come out coming off of the IEP in 2004, which also totally blew my mind. But as many of you know, I was pretty disappointed with the final results. I've talked about this quite a bit if you're a regular viewer of the channel. But I got enough comments on the previous video telling me I'm wrong, so I gave this one another shot, as I always do when I re-listen to these. I mean, I've listened to it quite a few times, but I very recently gave it another good old college try to appease the mob and see if maybe I would finally changed my mind. Now, I will say I enjoyed portions of it more than previously, and it definitely gets me banging my head, but for the life of me, I still cannot understand the people that call this their best album, and they're out there. There's quite a few of them. For those not familiar, this entire album is also built as one long arrangement, like the IEP was, just broken up into, I guess, what you could call sort of movements. But ultimately, so much of it just feels so repetitious and even downright boring in the quiet sections, which actually feel completely unnecessary to an extent, at least with how long they go on. There are admittedly some solid performances on here, and it's not without its moments. I respect the experimentation, but it just doesn't stack up in comparison to the others, and the cardinal sin is that one of the main draws of Meshuggah is the rhythms. Like, that's kind of the whole thing, <laughs> right? Like, everything down to the vocals is percussion, and so particularly, Hake's drumming is such an important element, in my opinion, Yet this album utilizes fully programmed drums from the drum kit from Hell, which, in my opinion, makes it feel kind of soulless and robotic. As far as favorite moments, Disenchantment is a good start that gets me grooving, Entrapment is pretty decent, and also the parts of In Depth are pretty fun. It's a cool idea and fitting for the band as a concept in theory, but in execution, it just doesn't stick with me or keep me coming back. It almost feels like a meme on how people who don't like Gent feel about Gent, in a way. I see about a 50-50 response on this one, like half of fans seeming to think it's a masterpiece, and others like me who don't have much love for it at all, I'm still gonna leave it at C tier. But next up is Obzen in 2008, another fantastic album, one that I would consider to be one of their best. I love Combustion, it really kicks you in the face right out of the gate, and that bass intro always reminds me of Tool, which makes sense because they're actually touring with them around this time, and this song just grabs you by the throat and is just an excellent way to kick off the album. Then, of course, there's Bleed. Both of these songs, I'd say, are probably in, like, their top five songs of all time, and seeing them perform Bleed live, too, like, almost brought down the damn house at the venue. There's something so malevolent about that little ascending and descending riff that just really tickles the reptilian part of your brain. They should do psychological research around the effects of that song. This was also kind of a return to their faster paced material because both Nothing and Catch 33 had that kind of slower, groovier pace, and this is more like raw, in your face, just super balls to the wall. Then there are also some great deeper cuts on here like Electric Red, Provis and the closer Dancers to a Discordant System, which ends on the same utterly destructive, apocalyptic note that this album opens up on. A little bit of trivia for the title, if you didn't know, it's supposed to be a combination of Obscene and Zen, and it's supposed to be a play on the idea that 
kind of as a society, we've developed this zen with the obscene things out there. All around, just a really great outing, often named as a top choice among fan. For me personally, it's not my number one or even number two, but it's definitely in the top three. I had originally put this at A tier, but I'm gonna go ahead and graduate it up to S tier. It, it belongs there. Next up is Colos in 2012. So I have only heard a handful of people truly give this album its due, and I just don't understand why, because cover to cover, every song on this album could be a single. Like, I'm at least happy to see that people in my audience seem to be giving this album the credit that it deserves, but on the whole, I see a lot of naysayers, but to me, this album has this level of consistency that, in my opinion, is actually unmatched by any of their other albums. And much like nothing, you again get this kind of variety in terms of paces and textures to really mix things up. You've got the lumbering menace of I Am Colossus. You've got the groove machine of Do Not Look Down. The maniacal tapping of The Demon's Name is Surveillance. The frantic sliding on Marrow, which is just like neck snapping material. And the mega gent mosh pit anthem Demiurge, which is another absolute barn burner and top 10 track for them. And I've mentioned this before, but I heard someone refer to this album as slower than the other ones. And to that person, I have to say, are we listening to the same album? Because if we are, you should really get your ears checked and listen again. Seriously, what's not to love on this thing? This is a great album that deserves more recognition and it barely feels its length because it's another one that's nearly an hour, but it just breezes by. And to include an actual quote from Thomas Hockey on this one, he said, as always, we try to make our music in a slightly different direction with each album. And with Coloss, we feel we really nailed what we were going for. Organic brutality, viscera, and groove all crammed into a 54 minute metalicious treat best avoided by the faint of heart. I concur. I'm gonna say it again and I don't care who disagrees. This is their best album. S tier. Which brings us to The Violent Sleep of Reason in 2016. So this one is interesting in that it is actually recorded live as a band all together instead of the typical recording of these separate parts and then kind of copy pasting them together which I think is Pretty impressive in its own right. And especially within that context, I gotta say, I just don't understand some of the opinions I heard about this album either when it came out. Like, critics mostly seem to really like it, but I heard a lot of fans calling it dumbed down and not as good as the other albums, and... Again, I just don't understand that. If anything, it only gets better with each listen, and I've spun it a couple more times in preparation for this and after listening to the latest album, and there are some real slappers on here like Monstro City, which just has this demented groove to it, Clockworks, Ivory Tower, Born in Dissonance, Nostrum, which also has one of their most wicked solos to date, amazing drumming as well, which is pretty much a given, but again, especially with how this was recorded, it's pretty damn inspiring, especially from a guy who's getting on in years at this point. And another album where there's really not a bad song. I might even go out on a limb here and say some days I actually think it may even be a little bit more consistent than Obzin even if it doesn't have quite as high of highs. And the last two tracks are maybe slightly weaker, so it doesn't finish quite as strong. Still very engaging too, again, in spite of the nearly one hour length. So to the naysayers out there, you really ought to re-listen to this album. It's not as good as Coloss, not as good as nothing, but it's still worthy at least of a B plus, I would say. And then that all brings us to Immutable in 2022. So right from the start, Broken Cog actually got me pretty excited on my first listen. It's a pretty stripped back start-stop groove that could basically serve as like a facsimile of their entire sound, but something about that simplicity matched with the production choices, the whispery vocals, and the overall atmosphere are very reminiscent of the Nothing era, which definitely gave me a wave of nostalgia. And I'd say a lot of that vibe actually carries over to much of the album with tracks like The Abysmal Eye, which has more of a jangly, tremolo-focused riff alongside those eerie atmospheres sustained guitars in the background, and the first of a few very classic era chaotic guitar solos. Or Kaleidoscope and The Faultless, which arguably have the most infectious grooves on an album that is absolutely packed with them. It's that same kind of approach where there is a pretty specific through line to the overall aesthetic, but they manage to provide enough variation to the guitar patterns to give most songs a 
pretty specific personality. Certain tracks also bring that Obzin energy, like Light Shortening the Fuse, which has a hook that reminds me a bit of a slowed down version of Combustion, and Ligature Marks, which feels like a cross between a chunky Nothing Era head bobber with a bit of the title track from Obzin. I'd put the Chuggy Phantoms in this category as well. And then others like God He Sees in Mirrors and Armies of the Preposterous almost feel like they're reaching back to Chaos Sphere. There are some marks of returning experimentation here and there as well. I feel like it's been a while since we got some vocal variation, but I've already mentioned the whispery moments, and then on the Faultless, we also get one of their creepy kind of spoken word sections where the voice sounds like it's been maybe pitched down. Like I said in my early impressions video, I'm getting some Buffalo Bill vibes. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Then there are some slight musical detours with another one of their minimalist and vaguely unsettling closer the eerie interlude of Black Cathedral, which forgoes any genting at all in favor of more of a black metal sound, and probably the one that sounds most unlike any of their previous material. And then the soft, chill break with the intro of the nearly 10-minute instrumental They Move Below, which is something they've done before, but not necessarily to this degree. Speaking of which, it is definitely worth discussing the length here, as at 68 minutes, this is Meshuggah's longest album yet, by a pretty decent margin. Regular viewers know I frequently complain about long albums, and I want to be clear, I mean that in terms of albums being longer than they need to be. Some warrant an hour plus runtime like Opeth's Strongest Material, others do not. As for Immutable, even after dozens of listens now, I'm still pretty pleasantly surprised. My feelings are a little bit mixed. I do think it could be trimmed down or even potentially broken into like two albums, but generally there's not a moment on here that bores me, like even after all this time it's had to sink in. Thanks to the little variations and experiments here and there, they keep me pretty engaged all the way through. That said, if you are new to the band or already don't care for them, this may be a bit much for you. In regards to the writing process, Martin stated that they wanted to make an album with as few restraints as possible, as cool an album as possible, have no anxiety about it, and see it as an opportunity, and I think that this material certainly reflects this. At this point, it may not have some of the focused punch of my overall favorites, but I'm still feeling pretty high for this one. If I were scoring it for a review, I'd also give it about a B plus, but I think within the context of this tier list, I'm actually going to put it at A tier. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more of my metal tier list. Check out this playlist for more reviews of Immutable, and also just let me know down in the comments what's your favorite Meshuggah album, what do you think of this new one, how would you grade it? But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.